Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes. Hi, I'm Dawn, and here I write miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. And this is a continuation of a special request, a birthday surprise for someone's birthday. So, this is part three. I hope you enjoy it. There will be a part four. And probably a part five. I'm not going to say, I'm going to stop saying how many parts in total there's going to be of this one. I just can't stop writing it. So I hope you enjoy it and smash that like button. Comment down below Adrian's birthday um, if you don't know what else to say. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? Press that subscribe button and I hope you enjoy. Bye. Part 3. Marinette's POV Marinette pulled back knowing her cheeks were on fire. Hadrian, composing himself, turned to the stall holder with a few notes in his hand. We'll take the hat. Causing her to let out a girly giggle and glancing at his face that too had an equally broad smile blending in with the pink cheeks. Thank you. For the hat. Adrian turned back round, placing the change in his pocket, and took hold of Marinette's hand, brushing his thumb against hers, guiding her towards another stall. My pleasure. Think of it like an umbrella we can hide under when I kiss you again. His gaze darting towards her smiling eyes. Adrian... She gestured him to the side, away from the rows of people filtering across from one booth to another. Her heart was pounding in her chest. It was different to the usual flutter. This time, it was more hammering against the sides, trying to break free. She was about to confess her true feelings to Adrian. Yes, she had said she liked him over a text message, but this was to his face. But he had said he was falling for her, hadn't he? She could do this. It was now or never. Lay your cards on the table. Bite the bullet. Actually, she wasn't totally sure on that reference. Never mind. Focus. Yes, Marinette? He gave her hand a light squeeze, bringing her attention back to him. Adrian? She turned her gaze away from the river and back onto his face, which was smiling, but he also had a hint of fear in his eyes. With her free hand, she ran her fingers across the black leather jacket she had made for him and patted her forefinger on one of the tiny ladybugs for good luck. I like you. No. No? His hand reached out around her waist, pulling her in closer. Oh, she had already kissed him. He said his feelings. Why on earth was this hard? Why did she suddenly feel fragile? That if he should drop her, she would fracture into tiny shards. It's more... He encouraged her in closer against him. Oh, she couldn't breathe. Her gaze fixed on her hand on his jacket. Come on. Look up, Marinette. Say it to his face. It will be fine. You can do it. His soft apricot lips. His button nose. And at last landing on his sparkling green eyes. Adrian, I love you with all my... His lips engulfed her words with a slow and tender kiss. Her head was spinning. She pulled back, taking a deep breath. Heart, she blurted out, causing him to chuckle. You, you mean it. You're not just saying it. I've loved you for years. I just... I didn't think... I thought you... 
Really? Yes. I thought you with. Oh, I wish I had. Marinette. Yes. I love you too. He let the words float between them, seeping into her mind, which was now officially struggling to process the information. Oh, and one more thing. And she let out a squeak in response. Will you be my girlfriend? You? Adrian? Love me? And want to be my boyfriend? Was she dreaming? One of those fever dreams that seemed so real. She hadn't felt sick. Oh, please say this wasn't a dream. Yes. He let out a light laugh. Yes to all of it. Will you? And make my birthday wish come true. And you said you love me too. He gave her a cheeky grin. She had never seen him do before. She liked this side of him. Yes. Good. He gave her another quick kiss, as if sealing the deal, all binding. Now, I think I spotted some food stalls ahead. Tea? Hot chocolate? I might go for a coffee. He gave her a wink. Where had this newfound confidence come from? She wished it spread to her and stop her buffering mind that was struggling to process the information. So, what's it going to be? A hot chocolate, please? Maybe sugar will help to kickstart her brain. Hello. Can I get a grande pumpkin spiced coffee and a grande deluxe fudge hot chocolate, please? Thank you, Marinette whispered as her eyes widened at the marshmallows and whipped cream added to the top. If this wasn't going to do the job, she didn't know what would. Did you get pumpkin spice? Spice. Yeah, I keep seeing it mentioned on the American shows and wanted to give it a go. The conversation was slowly returning to how it was before. No, in fact, it was better. She could make little gestures and not overthink it. They now knew where they stood with each other, apart from one little thing. She carefully opened her side bag and slipped in a free token cookie before clipping it shut again. Where else would you like to go? I saw a cheese stand over there. Would you mind? I'll get it delivered. He tilted his head to the side and gave her a smile no one could ever say no to. Then he took a sip of his coffee and nodded his head. Actually... This is, this is nice. I can see why it's a favourite of theirs. Sure, lead the way. She took a mouthful of the cream off the top of her drink and saw a blush forming on his cheeks before he leant forward and brushed his thumb across the front of her nose. <laughs> Whoops, she giggled. They spent another hour wandering from one stall to another as her phone buzzed in her pocket. Alia, how's it going with Adrian? Still holding it together? Preparations is going well. Make an excuse to bring him to my flat at 4pm, okay? She wasn't going to tell her best friend over the phone all the details. She would end up flipping out and getting distracted. She would tell her at the party. Marinette. Oh, good here. That should be fine. See you then. Alia. I want details later. How? 
How could she tell from that? Was there nothing she could hide from her best friend? Marinette let out a chuckle, grabbing Adrian's attention. Oh, blast. What's so funny? He turned his focus away from some artistic jewellery he was studying and back to her. Oh, nothing. Just something Alia had just messaged about. But they say they can't do the cinema and meet afterwards. But we could still go, if you want to, that is. A date? At the movies with my girl? Where we can warm up from the chill? I can't think of anything better. Adrian slipped his hand around her waist and gave her a peck on the cheek. She had curled up in his arms like she'd seen other couples do countless of times at the cinema and always wondered what it would be like. It was so much better than she had imagined. They had joked about the last time they had attended the cinema together, him in his helmet and her in the goggles, the towel head and pyjamas. I had loved that day, dashing around Paris with you and then how you looked all cute, like in that disguise. I think that's where my feelings changed. Adrian let out a soft chuckle, scooping her in a little closer. I love that day too, the two of us. She sighed happily as he kissed the top of her head, whilst his fastening heartbeat echoed that of hers. The film had been sweet, as the girl wore the mask to become a kitty and add comfort to the boy she loved, whilst battling her own demons at home. For some reason, it reminded her of her own kitty. Chat, even though his attention had shifted away from her of late, she wondered how he would take the news that she was now dating someone else. On their next patrol, she would find some way to tell him, but also give a gesture of friendship, that nothing would change between the two of them. Lost in her thoughts, she hadn't noticed at first Adrian getting emotional towards the film until she heard his sniffles. He was a sensitive soul, wasn't he? She pulled him in tighter and felt him rest his head on hers. What was in this film that was making him so sad and on his birthday too? Hey, you okay? She whispered up at him. Yeah, good. He interweaved his fingers around hers. Anime has this effect on me sometimes. He removed his hand from around her shoulders and smudged his sleeve against his eyes ridding himself of the evidence before planting a smile on his face she didn't quite believe. The film finished and they had 30 minutes until they were due at Alia's. Is there anything you'd like to do? We have a little time before Alia and Nino can meet us, Marinette said, noticing Adrian was still a little distracted. Or we can just walk. Walking is good. Park or river? He took her hand and without hesitation now. How had it already become second nature to them in the space of a few hours? Park, you have the colours changing of the seasons, but the river is romantic. Yeah. It's settled then. River it is. They walked the few blocks in silence, only communicating with each other through taps and gentle strokes of the fingers against the others. Random strangers ambled past them, keeping their heads down against a sudden chill from the drop in temperature. Marinette let out an involuntary shudder as a sharp breeze cut through her. Are you cold? Would you like my jacket? No, silly. He glanced at her sideways. Then you would get cold. I'll be fine. Why why don't we take a seat then? I hear body heat is the best way to combat the cold. 
He raised his eyebrows up at her. Is that so? And here's me thinking that it was for hypothermia. Well, I didn't want to say, but but you're turning a little blue ma- marinette. He tapped on the seat beside him. In that case, she lowered herself down. Marinette was all too aware that they tried to act confidently in front of each other, but there was still this newness about letting her guard down. The side of herself she only allowed to show in front of Alia and Shat. Now she needed to add Adrian into that list after years of being a fumbling mess around him. That should be easy, right? I wanted to say thank you. This has been the best time and the most amazing birthday. It's not over yet. Which is great, but even if it ended now, it would be. How you have made it a a birthday surprise. I'm glad you mean the world to me, Adrian. It was her turn to lean in a little closer and taking a steady breath and was about to. When her alarm went off, they were going to be late. Thank you for listening to part three of A Birthday Surprise. Um, Make sure you smash that like button so you don't miss out on part four, which will be coming next week. Um, And make sure you smash that like button if you liked it and comment down below. Happy birthday, Adrian, if you don't know what else to say. So thank you very much for listening and I will speak to you soon. Bye.